Hey there everybody. In today's video I'm going to discuss the similarities and differences between Line and Shap. So these are two models that we can use to understand how our machine learning models are actually working. Okay, let me take you through it. So both of these tools are model agnostic, so you can use that in any type of model, any type of, any type of classifier, aggressor, um, deep learning model, so on and so forth. Um, both uh, techniques explain individual predictions rather than providing global understandings of the model. So we'll see an example of that. You'll see how, um, <clears throat> how important features are into um, predicting the dependent variable of the, of the uh, model that we, that we choose to work with. Um, both Lyman Shap aim to explain and contribute uh, individual features to specific predictions. We'll see an example of that. Both have uh, visual interfaces, which are intuitive and easy to understand. Lime's um, explanations are derived from locally fitted um, items into the model, and SHAP provides more interpretation for um, consistency and feature attributes across the data set. Okay, so let's jump in and look at an example. This data is sitting on my desktop right here. Oh, let me refresh that. I wasn't supposed to be there. This is um, a data frame. I'm sorry, this is a CSV file. I pulled it into a data frame. The uh, data is on my desktop, so we can visualize that. This is data pertaining to wine, and we are going to look at specifically the quality of the wine, how the quality is measured. I believe the scale is uh, 1 to 10, with the independent variables being fixed acidity, volatile acidity, citric acid, residual sugar, so on and so forth. Everything in the X variable are independent and the y is a dependent right so the y is dependent on all the independent variables so we go ahead and um, train it we're using a test size of uh, 0.2 so training is 0.8 and we are using the ram random forest regressor that's a good one so let me refresh that <clears throat> and let's look at our shap um, output here so what does it look like okay so we can see alcohol sulfates and volatile acidity contribute to about the first one's 30 percent then 20 so 50 and another 10 about 60 percent of the predictive capability of the model is um, um contained in these in these first three features right here so um, that is how we know what what the feature how important these features are although this isn't really a feature importance exercise it's more like how do the features um, have an impact on the dependent variable, right? Let me go down here a little bit. I have, I have some notes that explain this pretty well. Um, yeah, okay, so we have two charts here actually. We have a sort of a feature importance chart. It's a little bit different. I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second. And then we have um, just another chart here that shows, the, shows you the impact of the model, right? So the Features are in the same order, in the same order, alcohol sulfates, volatile acid, sulfuric dioxide, and a pH level. That's exactly what we see over here. But now we can see that the, the um, output can be as high as positive 1.0 and down to negative 1.0. This one goes down to negative 0.5. Um, with these degrees showing you the, um, the overall impact um, of these features on the dependent on the dependent variable, right? But again, like I said, this is not really a feature important exercise. Um, in the notes I highlight it here, shaft values estimate the impact uh, feature predictions. Okay, so this is a predictive capability of the model. Feature importance estimates the impact the features will have on the model fit, right? So it's a little bit different, slightly different, um, kind of the same concept though, but. Um, in this exercise with SHAPS, we're looking at um, the ability to predict features and with a feature importance, it's more about um, the fitting of the model, right? So uh, here I have some more notes about Lime. I'm not going to go through all of these details. You can read this for yourself. Everything is um, it's a pretty comprehensive overview of Lime and what it does. Now we're going to look at an example of SHAP. Okay, so we have the um, SHAP model. We are going to, again... Um, we have trained and test the model. We have the X and Y variables. So here's the independent, here's the dependent. I'm going to click Control F to refresh this guy. Okay. And let's look at the line output. Control Enter again to refresh it. Make sure everything is up to date here. We have feature names as columns, right? This should be pretty intuitive. I'm going to um, save all this code here so you don't have to 
memorize anything, I'm going to save it as an HTML file and post it when I post a video. So you'll, you'll have access to all this data. You can copy and paste it and run this in your own Jupyter Notebook environment and everything's going to work um, just like you would expect, right? And they'll give you the data source at the end of at the end of this too. So um, this model is done running and we can see the output is somewhat similar to line, but this, this chap is actually a little bit different. Now it's saying that the feature, most important feature is the alcohol, the sulfates, the chlorides, and the pH. So we have alcohol, sulfates, chlorides as the top three. With lime, we had um, alcohol, sulfites, and volatile acidity. So slightly different, right? Alcohol, sulfite, sulfites, volatile acidity. Here we have alcohol, sulfites, and <clears throat> chlorides. And that's fine, right? It's a different approach. Um, the output is somewhat similar to to what we get with the Lime model, right? But um, SHAP is, is producing something different because the, the fundamental approach is a little different, right? So SHAP is based on uh, cooperative game theory and uses the concept of shapely values, okay? So um, again, I'm not probably not going to go through all these notes. Everything is spelled out here. It's a pretty comprehensive explanation of how SHAP works. Um, and it's really that easy. I just wanted to take you through these, these two models show you the nuts and bolts of it and explain the, the similarities and differences. So they both do an excellent job at helping to explain the overall um, what the model is doing. And this is excellent for your stakeholders or for your clients that you're working with to help them to understand what is the model really doing, right? Some of these can tend to be black boxes, but when you run the, the Lime model and um, the SHAP, well, more of analysis, and when you run the Lime analysis and SHAP analysis, you can understand better what the model is really doing, right? You can peel back those layers of comp complexity and expose really um, the fundament fundamental uh, purpose of, of how the model is performing and how it's behaving too, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, all the notes are in here. I'm going to save this file and post it with the video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Bye.